Yo, what is going on everybody? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to properly overclock your NVIDIA GPU. Now I'm saying properly because a lot of YouTube videos show you how to overclock using the offsets. So all you do is just you add more to core clock or memory clock. That's not how we're going to do it in this video. We're going to do a much better way that is consistent and you can pretty much replicate on your card very easily. So first things first, just head over to the link in the description. There's going to be two links. First is going to be the MSI after burner and the second one is going to be the benchmark slash stress test that we're going to be using and i'm gonna leave another link for another stress test in there as well for memory but let's get right into it just a quick little advertisement right here if you guys want this done for you and a whole bunch of other things basically a full pc optimization with the gpu overclock and many more things head over to the link in the description it's going to take you to my website all you're going to do is just book the advanced pc optimization and then choose the GPU overclock add-on and you could do this with the complete PC session and the advanced PC optimization It's your choice on which one you want but then you just pick a time from whatever you want time you want and then we'll basically get everything done for you at that time but anyways let's get right back into the video so here are the three links that we're going to be downloading things from so first one when I download MSI afterburner of course and then superposition benchmark we're gonna click free download right here i'm not gonna download this right now because it's 1.2 gigs and i already have it so and then occt we're gonna download this as well this is two we're gonna download occt just to test our vram once we're done basically applying everything all right so once everything's downloaded all we're gonna do is of course set up msi afterburner first and this is pretty much easy just press okay on here next except next uncheck reaver tuner statistics server we're not going to be using it in this video if you want to use it for whatever reason keep this checked but we're not going to be using it and next then install wait for it to install and then we're going to uncheck show readme click finish get exit out of this and we can open up msi afterburner now it's going to look a little bit different for you basically a different skin so in order to change the skin to get it looking like this all we're going to do is click the gear icon and then we want to copy these settings right here so unlock voltage control third party unlock voltage monitoring force constant voltage check for available product updates never and then monitoring this is where we actually are going to be changing things in here so we're going to uncheck everything except gpu temperature or clock memory clock and and GPU voltage and power limit. Everything else we can uncheck. We're not going to be needing it for this scenario because we're going to be overclocking our GPU and we're just trying to see those information instead of these other ones that are unnecessary for what we're doing. So as you can see now, only those are going to show up. So go back to settings, user interface, choose MSI Cyborg Afterburner White. It could do a different color, but Cyborg Afterburner is the one we're gonna be using and then press okay. Now, uh, if you have any, any profiles right here, just delete them. Make sure startup right here is checked. And now we're gonna basically start the process right here. So first things first is we're gonna open up Superposition Benchmark and get a baseline test and see what our baseline is. All right, everybody. So once you have Superposition installed and downloaded, all we're gonna do is go back to MSI Afterburner, make Make sure power limit and temperature limit are all the way maxed out right here and then just make sure it's like that and then core voltage just leave this alone don't touch core voltage and then we're gonna go to superposition benchmark and basically you want to max out the vram right here but not go over it so for example if you have a 1650 or a card that only has four gigabytes of vram like me you're probably get only going to be able to do 1080p extreme 4k optimize is too much don't do that 1080p extreme is good enough for this card and now go to settings just turn off the sounds and the tool tips we're going to be using those and yeah if you're on a rtx 3060 or just any of the 3000 series or the 4000 series literally just max this out you should be able to max it out this goes the same thing for rtx 2080s 2070s you could probably do the same thing but you just want to make sure that you're right under the vram limit but not over it but at least right under it so it, it puts a decent amount of stress on your gpu but anyways once you've picked the preset after you've listened to what i said on which preset to pick we're just gonna press run and it's gonna start running so it's gonna take about three to five minutes it depends on your gpu if you're getting more frames it's gonna finish faster if you get and less frames like 30 it's gonna finish a little bit slower but just let it do its thing don't alt tab don't do any of the other sort of 
tasks just let it load and once you get a baseline score at the end come back to this video all right so you should have msi afterburner running in the background while this was running and if you didn't just have msi afterburner running in the background and then run it again and get a baseline so i get 1631 you want to keep in mind the score just because once we start raising some of the clock speeds we want to actually see an improvement if we don't see an improvement in the score that means either the clock is unstable or it just doesn't work. But anyways, go to MSI Afterburner, wanna scroll down, and then you wanna find GPU voltage. Now, it's gonna be constant, and then once it starts doing this, that's whenever it matters, because this is whenever we start running the baseline test. So right here, it should say minimum 943 and that's basically going to be the voltage that we're going to be using for our voltage lock so what is voltage lock so basically we can lock our gpu voltage to a certain voltage and it'll stop the constant switching back and forth between voltages and clock speeds which actually increase latency every time the gpu does that so it's going to be constant it's going to be less latency and we're going to be able to get way better overclocks because it's running cooler because it's running lower voltage so minimum is 943 for my GPU, yours might depend on what GPU you have and what cooling, but basically if your GPU is running hotter, like for example, it's reaching 70 degrees for me, you could run the baseline test again with 100% GPU fan speed and then see what your GPU voltage is after that. But for most of you, but yeah, that's only if your GPU is overheating or reaching anything above 70 degrees. If it's not reaching that, then you're perfectly fine to just use whatever the baseline was without increasing fan speeds. But if you want a way better overclock, it is recommended to just leave the fan speeds on 100%, but that is your choice if you want to do that or not. But anyway, I'm going to do that just because it's a one fan card and it's not going to be that loud. But anyways, we're going to find 943. As you can see, find whatever your minimum is. My maximum is this. But ignore the maximum. We want to look at the minimum. So mine is 943. I'm going to press Control F on my keyboard. Find 943 in this graph. So like the box corresponding to 943. You might have to click some of these boxes to find out what number it is. But this box right here is 943. I'm going to press Lock L on your keyboard to lock it at that voltage. And then we can exit out of this. Press Apply. And as you can see, it'll switch back to the voltage. Now there's no load on the GPU right now. So it's a little bit lower. But once there's load on it, it won't go up above 943. Now, we're going to actually touch our memory clock now. So this slider right here is the one we're actually changing. Core clock is a different story. Do not worry about core clock for now. But anyways, memory clock, it depends on what GPU you have. So if you're on a 3000 series card, so RTX 3060, 3070, 3080, 3090, you could go 1000 on the memory clock probably even more it depends on the card 3060s you might be able to do a thousand or 850 megahertz on the memory clock on 3070s you might be able to do a thousand or 1250 on 3080s, it might just be a thousand or 1250. It depends on what card you have. Now, if you're on an RTX, RTX 2000 series, it's gonna be way lower. I think the maximum for that is probably 600 or 700. It depends on what card, of course. And if you're on a 16 series, it's probably even lower. If you're on a 10 series, it's probably even lower. But it honestly depends on what card you have. So we're gonna find out, basically, if you're on a 3000 series card, start off with a thousand. And if you start crashing with that, or you get a lower score, lower it by 150 or increase it by 150 over time if you want a better score or if you're not experiencing any crashes but for most of you we're going to need to basically increase it over time so we're going to start off with 250 we're going to increase it by 250 and then we're going to run the test make sure our score is going up at least by a significant amount not really a crazy amount but a significant amount to actually show that there's a difference if there's no difference lower it and see if that gives a difference and that lower one is probably better than the higher one but basically i'm gonna start off with 250 on my 16 series card do the same thing if you're on 16 series or if you're on 2000 series or if you're on 10 series cards for 3000 series gpus a thousand start off with that if it's not stable start off with 850 and if it's stable then you could try 1250 1150 or just stay at a thousand but you should be able to do a thousand on 3000 series rtx gpus 40 series i'm not too sure about right now but it's most likely the same thing as 3000 series gpus but you could probably go a little bit higher. But anyways, I'm gonna do 250 for 16 series and press apply and then run the test again. And then keep in mind what this score is going to be and then compare it to the baseline. If you got an improvement, great job. 
that is a nice overclock right there you can continue increasing it or you can stick with that but continue increasing it make sure there's a difference after you increase it if there is a difference good keep going and then so on and so forth until you find a value that act either makes the benchmark crash or it makes your pc shut down or it literally just causes weird artifacts and glitches in your monitor and if that happens lower it to the previous value you tried and that one should be the one that is a decent overclock and should be pretty good on that clock speed for memory but that's for memory. We're gonna move on to core clock memory. You're gonna have to do trial and error, trial and error, trial and error until you get a decent amount. And then before we move on to core clock, we actually wanna make sure that the memory is 100% stable. So what we're gonna do to actually make sure it's 100% stable, we're gonna do this multiple times in this video. We're gonna click game right here and then set it to whatever preset you used in here in benchmark. Set it to the whatever preset you used in benchmark in the game. I use 1080p extreme. So you press run and this is basically a way we, where we can loop this benchmark over and over and after 10 minutes or 15 minutes and if there's no crashes no black screens no artifacts your memory overclock is a 90 percent stable in fact the 10 percent might come up in the occt test but anyways we're going to click cinematic mode right here and it's going to start looping the benchmark over and over and over again so let this run for about 10 15 minutes and if it's still running after that great job that memory overclock is really good to use and you can use it we're going to move on to occt so what occt is it's a bunch of benchmarks within the tool of stress test and we're going to use it in this case just for vram stress test so open up occt all right everyone so once you've opened up occt choose stability test on the left we're going to click vram right here and you want to max this out to a hundred percent memory and then press start wait for this 10 second counter to finish and then press start and it'll start stress testing your gpu's vram now I'd say let this run for about 15, 30 minutes. As you can see, it says 30 minutes right here. And if there's any errors that pop up, you want to lower your memory clock because that memory clock that you have already chosen and you're using the stress test with is unstable. So you want to lower it by 150, 250, just lower it by that much. Test again, make sure there's no errors and you should be pretty good. It is a time consuming process, but this is the only way to actually get a stable overclock that is 100% going to benefit you in game game and all around the PC. So let this run about for 15, 30 minutes. If there's no errors, then you're pretty much good to go. You can move on to core clock overclocking, but yeah. Let's move on to core clock overclocking. All right, everyone. So once you have your memory clock 100% stable, you've ran it through the 10 minute loop of superposition and the 15 slash 30 minute test in OCCT, and you know it's 100% stable. Now we can move on to overclocking or core clock, which is going to get us a lot more FPS and a lot less input lag, which memory clock also does, but core clock is way more significant. So we're going to press Control F, and this is how we're going to be increasing our core clock it's going to be through this little graph right here we're not going to be using the slider right here this is the only way to overclock your gpu properly we're going to go press Control f go to our voltage lock which is should be just yellow line like this across on what voltage we chose we're going to press enter and then we're going to basically increase this by a multiple of 15. so for example you can increase it by 150 which is 10 times 15 that's 150 so on and so forth so for example we could do 120 see if that's stable we could do 135 see if that's stable but basically you want to start off at 90 at first if 90 starts crashing, lower it by 15. So just keep subtracting 15 until you get a stable one. And then if 90 isn't crashing, you wanna increase it even more, add 15, so 105, and then close out of this, press apply, and it'll increase right on the left side by whatever amount you increased it by. Then you'd run this test, make sure the score goes up. Again, I cannot stress this enough. If the score does not go up, that means that the core clock is unstable or there's no difference or it's too high. So make sure 
that you're putting a reasonable amount, you're increasing it by a reasonable amount. You can't, obviously, you can't go anything above 150. I'm not going to lie. I've never seen a car go above 150 or 200 in my case, but I've never went that far. I never had to. But anyways, you want to do that, run the benchmark, make sure you're seeing a difference in the score. If you're not seeing a difference in the score, lower it down by 15. If that makes a difference in the score, that means that one has more performance than the one that's higher. Higher doesn't always mean better, guys. Really incorporate this in this video. A lot of videos don't talk about how higher can lead to instability and just issues and blue screens and crashes. Higher isn't always better. You want to find a stable value that 100% gives you better performance in the benchmark. So do that. And then once you've actually found a core clock speed that 100% gives you better scores in this benchmark, you're going to go to game and do the same thing we did with the memory clock. You're going to loop the benchmark by clicking run, clicking cinematic mode on the top left and just looping it for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can honestly even do 30 minutes. You keep looping it back and forth. If there's any crashes or blue screens or black screens or just weird artifacts within your monitor, then you went too high on the core clock drop it down, try again and keep going. It's just a trial and error process. It's very, very time consuming, which is why I recommend just getting the service. If you want it done for you, just get an optimization service and picking the GPU overclock add on. But if you want to do this yourself, this is why I made this video. But anyways, that should be it for overclocking our GPU. Then once you're done and you have the values that you want, I'm going to click the save button right here save it to a profile, make sure startup right here is checked, and then you can lock this so you don't make any changes accidentally and accidentally delete the profile. Then you can exit out a MSI afterburner and it'll still apply. So every time you restart your PC, because we have startup checked, it's gonna apply it instead of just running MSI afterburner in the background, which by the way, I don't recommend that. It's gonna cause a lot of input lag if you're leaving it running in the background, there's no need to. Just make sure it applies on startup by clicking that box right there. A lot of people run it in the background, there's no point unless you're setting a custom fan curve which by the way i don't recommend just do 100 percent, 85 percent, 75 percent on the fans do whatever you want but just don't set a custom fan curve and have msi afterburner running in the background it just creates more input lag but anyway guys that's pretty much it for this video if you want more things like this comment down below subscribe turn on notice i'm posting a lot more recently and like this video for the youtube algorithm so it gets recommended to other people and post a review of this video on twitter show me the difference between the overclock and no overclock in fps or just latency wise just show me that i'll happily retweet it or unlike it but that's pretty much it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one peace